in Romans chapter 12. Close enough. <laughs> what did they say we were in, Pastor Dalthway? 14. 14? <laughs> well, they that's what it's for. Time's a waste. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, in all, maybe by August. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Got all my translation spread out here. All right. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for gathering us around your word this morning, and we ask that your Holy Spirit would guide us in our study so that your words might strengthen our faith in your son Jesus and help us to grow in love for one another. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So last time we, remember, discussed this section, uh, verses 3 to 8. And I think some of you, if, if YouTube isn't lying to me, uh, got to watch the... I, I walked you through the measure of faith verse. Did some of you get to see that? And, and so ma making the case for understanding at the end of 3, where it says, well, let's just hear the whole verse. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. And it, it's tricky for our ears uh, to come across the way this has been translated because when we hear that word measure, blame it on uh, cooking shows, uh, but we immediately think a, a particular amount. So what's the measure of flour this recipe calls for? What's the, the measure of salt that needs to be added? And measure in Greek has four or five different possible meanings. And, and they're, they're connected. It's easy to see how one is related to the other. But the primary meaning in the New Testament is not the amount measured, but the standard by which the thing is measured. So a ruler is a measure. A yardstick is a measure. And... It makes all the sense in the world. That's how Paul is using it here. Because what is he saying? Don't think more highly than you ought. Which is kind of euphemistic. How highly ought we think of ourselves? No. Not highly at all. <laughs> Fair enough? Fair enough. But if he were saying, think of yourselves in proportion to the amount of faith that you have. Then that would be saying, well if you've got a lot of faith, then... Lord it over people. Think of yourself pretty highly. But he's not saying that so much as he's saying let the way you think of yourself be ruled by the faith. Let the faith serve as the measure, the standard that keeps you in bounds. So that what is the faith, the faith is what Paul has been proclaiming in chapters 1 through 11 that we are all sinners worthy of, of condemnation and yet Christ died for the ungodly to make us godly through faith in Him and now by faith in Christ uh, we have a righteousness that avails before God uh, this all by grace, this all gift and that faith, what we believe in what was just said, that should serve as norm for our self-regard. All make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then we said, for as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. And... Uh, this idea of, uh, this concept of, of body in Christ is, is so important. Um, we are not as strings or beads on a, on a string. We are part of an organic whole. And the body 
exists prior to our being joined into it. So, so the church, body of Christ, is not simply a club or an organization where a bunch of like-minded people decided to do stuff together. The body of Christ is, in, in more than a metaphorical sense, a real entity, a real body that we have been made an organic part of and so are therefore now not only dependent on the head of that body, Jesus, but because we are parts of the same body, dependent on one another. This is a point made, um, I guess, clearer or, 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 or more in more depth by Paul in 1 Corinthians. You remember where he talks about, what is it, uh, the eye versus the foot? See, the, the, the eye can't say, I don't need you, and the foot can't say, likewise, to the eye, I don't need you. No, no, we, we, we are together in the same body, we depend on, on each other. When the back scratches, when the back itches, it needs fingers to scratch it. See? And, and so, so, likewise, there, there is a, um, there, there is true, there is, in a very realistic sense, this, um, this, this bodily dynamic going on among those who have been united with Christ. So, so think about it in our baptism, going back to, to chapter 6. All of those who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. From our baptism on, we, have, we are in Christ. And, and, and it's... it's um, Unfortunate that so many of our translations want to smooth out those in Christ phrases whenever they show up in, in Paul's letters, and they show up a lot. Um, and they, they, they want to smooth them out because in Christ is such an unnatural thing to say in English. Guess what? It's an unnatural thing to say in Greek. This is an unnatural concept, but it's the truth of what we really are by virtue of our baptism. We are now in Christ. And therefore, if we each are in Christ, we are, in a sense, in each other. We are in the same body with each other. And so, uh, as he says here, uh, though we, many, uh, are, 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 as in one body we have many members, the members don't all have the same function, so though, though many, uh, we, though many, are one body in Christ, we are also individually members of one another. Communion. In holy communion. We've got common and union in there. We're, we're both, we're, we're all gathered around the rail to, to receive the same Christ, the same body and blood of Christ. But in so doing, we are also being united with everyone else that's receiving Christ's body and blood there. So that communal aspect of communion, and that's why the practice of closed communion is so important. That we don't, by our actions, say the opposite of, of, of what we actually think, or what we actually believe. So, so we're gathered together as one, we're having communion, so we should be saying the same thing about what's going on, and so when the pastor or the elder comes around and says, uh, I, I'm here to give you Christ's body and Christ's blood, and you say, actually, all I want is the bread and the wine. <laughs> see, but but that, that's what you're saying as a Presbyterian or, or a Methodist or whatever. You see? And, and so um, your, your actions are, are, are contradicting your, your own beliefs because you're receiving at a place where this is the confession. And so you're, 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 you're being hypocritical at the very least. Um, but we're one body. We do things together, and so we, we do things in agreement. We do things as one. Um, and uh, uh, so, so that, that body image, it, it's, it's more than just a metaphor. It, it, we really are a, a body. Uh, and the Holy Spirit gathers us. See, it, it's so tough it, as Americans... And then even in the, the right of new membership, I mean, you have all the questions, and, and it certainly feels like we're volunteering to become part of the organization. Right? And yet, no, no, no. To be brought into the church is 
to receive. It, it's to have something done to you. The Holy Spirit's the agent. The Holy Spirit is the actor. And, and He pulls us in, incorporates us into the body. It's not our choice. It's, it's God's action, by God's grace. So, so that's how we ought to, to think of ourselves in relation to one another in the church as members of one body in Christ. And then we said last time, that, oh, oh, and, and, and just, just a few more things about, about this. I, I was thinking about this throughout the week, and just you know, all kinds of circumstances come up that reinforce this. Um, you know, th this whole idea of not thinking of yourselves more highly than you ought, that th there is a, a, an even kind of secular wisdom that this resonates with. You, you, you hear the phrase, um, comparison is the thief of joy, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and so, likewise, we're, we're getting the, the, the true version of that. Because what did we say last time? What did we see that, that Paul does that's a bit surprising? We're in an area of Paul's letter that would ordinarily be considered the ethical section. This is where Paul gets down to talking about our duties as a Christian. And yet he never calls them duties. He never calls them obligations. What does he call them? Gifts. These are our gifts. How does that change? Or how does being in Christ and the gifts we're given in Christ change the way we view things that would otherwise be called duties or obligations or responsibilities. Something you want to do joyfully. You want to use them joyfully. Yeah, yeah. We, we see this now as, as a privilege, things that we, we get to do versus have to do. We're already in. We're already God's children. We're already who God wants us to be. And now God is going to put us in all kinds of situations and give us opportunities to be that in, in a gifted way, right? So, so we no longer, and, and so often the transaction itself will look the same. Uh, you, you, you come across someone in need and the, the non-Christian doesn't kick him. You, the Christian, don't kick him. But you choose not to kick him for different reasons. <laughs> You see, the non-Christian chooses not to kick the guy for, because he doesn't want to get in trouble. <laughs> Someone may be watching. The, there, could be see, there could be video cameras. Or, or, or he's thinking, you know, I need to be a good person. I have to be a good person. I'm not going to kick this person. But the Christian says, ah, a gift. <laughs> God's put this person in my life at this time to be generous towards or to be helpful towards. Um, that, that can completely change your outlook about being a parent. Right? Your children are gifts. Now, it doesn't always feel like it, does it? They, 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 they can be crosses. And, and yet, they are gifts, and you are gifts to them. And, and that, that can sustain you, give you the strength to go about being Christ, being in, in Christ, towards this one, towards these children that God has given you. When you rightly see them as gifts and you see your responsibility toward them as a gift from God. Um, we, we talked self-esteem, didn't we? You know, self-esteem. See, self-esteem, so rightly understood, depends so much on self-knowledge. Because the, the, the person who's, who's living off of simply being, being told by his teachers or by the coach that he's excellent, magnificent, awesome in every way, right, is, is, is being set up for a time where that esteem of himself is going to be crushed, if not in this life, in the one to come. But self-knowledge, knowing ourselves to be sinners saved by grace, sets up 
a, a confidence that's grounded in something that can truly give us confidence. God's own word. God's own declaration of who we are. Uh, we, we talked about this on Monday Thursday, that the way John prefaces the, the action of his washing the disciples' feet, this great act of humility, right, was, was the very fact that Christ knew exactly who he was. The Son of God, that he had come from heaven and was going back to heaven. So, it, it, it wasn't in, in humility, but in glory that Jesus lowered himself in this very humble way. And so likewise, our knowing ourselves, knowing ourselves to be, as we sing today, royal sons and daughters, sons and daughters of the King, if we've already got everything in Christ, we risk nothing by stooping. We risk nothing by going low. The Philippians 2 that we looked at last time. Uh, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. What did Jesus do? He humbled himself. Right? Becoming obedient unto death, even death on a cross. But that was, in a sense, nothing to him because he already had everything. <laughs> and, and, and same for us. We have everything through him, and therefore, what does it hurt us to lower ourselves for the other? Um, and and th now that is going to frame all these uh, these things that, that come next. Pastor, that, that difference also affects how we relate to others, because if it's a matter of self-esteem as you are this awesome person, that also puts you above those around, so I should get thanks because I deserve them, rather I, than the gifts that knowledge where it's, I understand my position around... <clears throat> Right, they're also saved, we're all... Yes, right. These are all ones for whom Christ died, as he did for me, and, and therefore, who, who, who am I to put myself above them in myself, right? And, and that is another key concept, that all this has to do with not thinking of yourselves highly in yourself. Because what are you in yourself, a sinner worthy of condemnation? But in Christ, what are you? Redeemed, a child of God. Uh, you, you've, you've got best seat in the house. Um, the um, well, 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 well let's, let's look at some of the, the, the specific examples that, that he gives us here. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, and then what do we say about this? Let us use them. Anybody remember? It ain't there. That's right. And if you have the King James, you'll recognize the, uh, well, let's see, they, they decide to plug in extra words uh, later on after prophecy. So having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, that's there, that's according to the Greek, whether prophecy, and now it, it plugs in a let us, let us prophesy. But it's not there. It's not there, and that's why in, in your King James, at least, they, they put it in italics to show you that this is what the King James translators added to smooth it out in English. But instead, what we have, we, we never get a verb. We never get a verb in the Greek from basically um, 6 to the end, 6 to, through, through 8. In other words, it's just a list. It's just a list of stuff, a list of gifts. Uh, but he, he never he never comes through with a with a kind of duty word. Uh, if, if if it's prophecy, well, well, get out there and prophesy, people. He, he never does that. He just says, "Look, uh, we're, we're all part of the same body, having different gifts, prophecy, ministry, etc." Uh, and and so again, the emphasis is not on the doing so much or the performance. As the being, being who you are and who you've been, and and uh, um, who you've been made, who, who you've what, what you've been given. Uh, again, gifts. So so he, here's the gift. God's the one actually doing the work. The gift for you is to participate in that. To 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 cooperate with God in the work He's doing. Wow, what a privilege. 
but but there's no um, whiff of you know, you know, get out there and do this, this, and this, or else. Uh, get, get, get out there and, and, and perform so as to, to keep your salvation or to keep your status as children. Nope, nope. Because you're children, you are this. That's all in Christ. And now guess what he's done? You and Christ individually are given different gifts. And here's what some of those happen to be. If you go to 1 Corinthians, he has a section like this, and it's a different list. And, and you, you half wonder if Paul's thinking about the makeup of the individual congregations he's addressing. You see, that there's nothing sort of fixed about the examples of serving that, that he gives. Uh, that that there's, a, there's a flexibility in that. Um, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us, well, that doesn't, isn't there. If prophecy, in, not there, if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. So we've got uh, uh, eight or so of these, and there are two that are, that, are, that are different. The first two, they're different in that they are uh, referred to in, with, with a definite article. So, so we've got um, uh, prophecy, uh, the prophecy, if the prophecy, and if, the, and if service in the service. Okay, we've got the service. The other ones that follow don't have the definite article. And so we've got two main categories, and, and the rest logically fall under one or the other. So we've got to talk about what prophecy is and what service is. And uh, the prophecy word, very similar in Greek, but the, uh, the service word is where we get the word deacon, right? But uh, diakonia, so the, that, that's your service. Sometimes it gets translated as ministry. What's a minister? A Latin word for servant. But prophecy, prophecy, what is prophecy? So, so Rose is going with kind of the, the conventional predicting the future definition no. of... No, okay, no, no, okay. God gives, gives his prophets, they can have what we will happen. And okay. If it doesn't, it's not true. All right. And, and there is some of that. In it, but not in, but what's the main message of a prophet? When, you, when we pick up a prophetic book, let's say the prophet Isaiah, or the prophet Ezekiel, is it from beginning to end Not predictions of the future? God says this is going to happen in, in, in so many years from now. No, they're trying to teach us. They're trying they're to teaching. direct us and teach us and be able to change our, our thoughts or our behaviors. With regards to God. It, it, exactly. So, so the, the prophet speaks on God's behalf and applies God's word to his people at the time. What does that sound like? Sometimes warning. Sounds like, I hope it sounds like what your pastors do. <laughs> if, if it doesn't, we're, we're going to let you down. <laughs> uh, we're not uh, acting according to the gift God's given us. And, and, and remember that, by the way, uh, Paul refers to his gift, the grace given to him. And by that, he means not the divine favor for Christ's sake, but the grace given to him in the sense of his office of apostleship. By the grace given to him. This is his job as an apostle to say these kinds of things to them. And what did prophets of the Old Testament do? They took God's word, and it wasn't necessarily a new word. Like God whispered in their ear something he hadn't said before. They would take the word he spoke to Moses. Plenty of words there. And apply it to that generation of believers. And, and say, God's word says this. And God says, if you act like this, this is going to happen. You're acting like this. Therefore, 
God's going to do what he says he's going to do. Uh, applying God's word that way. And, and too often, the thing they were doing was the thing God didn't want them to do. Sometimes they did what he wanted them to do, in which case they could pronounce a blessing and say, because you have acted faithfully, uh, we can count on God to continue to preserve the land, etc. But uh, too often it was, it was the other way around. But, but that's prophecy. That's taking God's word and applying it. Uh, didn't need a, a, a special new revelation for much of what the prophets did in the Old Testament. Luther loves to say the, the, the prophetic books are practically commentaries on the books of Moses. And, 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 and more, more uh, specifically than that, commentaries on the Ten Commandments. Yeah, Marcella. I was under the impression that for a prophet to be a prophet, he had to actually hear the voice of God. Yeah, he certainly, yeah. he's called by God to carry out his task, absolutely. But that didn't mean that the prophet day to day wasn't simply, simply, but taking God's word already recorded, already <clears throat> given, and, and, and applying it logically to the, to the people at the time. But yeah, he was definitely called by God a word there that's new. You, Ezekiel, not, not someone else, but you, son of man, prophesy. You say these words. Um, but, but, but many of the words the prophets were given to preach, to proclaim, were words God had spoken hundreds of years before. And so likewise, w w any sermon preached in our Redeemer's pulpit, the, the pastor ought to be able to say at the end of it, Thus says the Lord. Yeah, I'm not up there to present my own ideas or the latest theory or, or, or showcase my cleverness. I'm there to present to you the fruits of my having studied the word and prepared the sermon based on that word and, and based on who I'm talking to, who, what, what they need to hear at this particular time. But even so, to be able to say because everything preached was grounded in God's own word, thus says the Lord. Right, you know, Luther said, "There's, there's no forgiveness um, for, uh, for, for the theologian who, who speaks on God's behalf. You, you can't get up there and preach and then go down. Please forgive me if I said anything wrong. <laughs> right? No, 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 no. You, you go in knowing that what you're about to say is God's own word and not, 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 not your own opinion. Yeah, Scott. Is it fair to say that in this context?" Uh, Prophecy, the kind of the definition of it, is it always the point to Christ in the gospel? Oh, a yeah, absolutely, right. That 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 is that prophecy is the proclamation of what God has revealed, which is salvation through Christ. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So we we, we got a problem if I get up there and tell you farm, you know, teach you farming techniques or <laughs> how to how to get the best out of your home brewing um, kits. Yeah, I'm there to proclaim Christ. Yeah, absolutely. You know, him and uh, Christ and him crucified. Right. I, I would say simply it's just that the prophet is there to proclaim God's truth, whether the people want to hear it or not. Yeah, there's that too. Yeah, right. Because that, I mean, a lot of what Paul writes is it doesn't really matter if that's what the people want to hear. Right. He's not, he's not Joel Olstein. Get up there and tell them what they yeah. want to hear to increase yeah. their riches yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. He gets well, up there and tells them. Yeah, or even what they think they need to hear, yeah. this is but God's what God truth. knows they need to hear. Yeah, right, right, right. So we could say in this prophecy category is what we would consider the, the preaching ministry, the ministry of the word as we call it. And so we're going to see some of the, the, the next examples fall under this. This, this falls under that, that category. Then we've got service. So what is service? What is serving? What, 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 what are some aspects of the church's life that don't fall under the, this, this idea of a category of, of hearing the word, let's say, receiving God's word? There's still... There's, there's still this to the life of the church. And we could call it service. What, what does that look like? Or what are some examples of that? Well, you're helping get things done. Such and as? Care of, well, stewardship Sunday. Cooking All right. Hamburgers. Yeah, cooking the hamburgers yeah. for the potlucks, right? Or 
Yeah, br bring in, bring in, uh, if you're A to, what, A to L, you better bring desserts. Yeah. Thank you, Gloria. This is a good opportunity to get that in. You at home, too, bring bring desserts, and bring, uh, bring chips and sides if you're M to Z. Is, is, is that how we divided it? Was it A to, A to L? Okay. All right. This is important. This is service. You got, you got A? Okay. Um, but, but yeah, you, the, the, the people gather in a place and maintaining that place, uh, paying the, the electricity and the utilities and so forth, um, but, but, but bringing meals to those who, who, who can't get them themselves, visiting the sick, right? That, that's all part of, of service. And, and as a body, we, we do that for one another. This is the playing out of one member of the body serving the other when the other needs it. Right. Pastor, like the servant um, is hearing the word, not giving the word, but doing the word. Is, is that another way of being a servant? You hear what God said from your pastor, and you carry out with the yeah, pastor. Yeah, a absolutely. Yeah, the, the two are connected. The two are absolutely connected, right? That as the word goes out, the word that proclaims God's love for you in Christ, you do it. declares you to be children of God, Right? Now you're going to be the children of God in your servant. Yeah. No, very good. Right. Uh, and yeah, and the, the, the service could never take place if, if it weren't first for the, for, for the preaching of the word. Yeah. No, very good. But it, speaking of service, uh, could someone service by lowering the temperature? What is uh, yeah, is, is it just me? No, it's yeah, is, is it? Oh, it is just me. It's it's my. <laughs> yeah, I'm sweating because uh, the pastor's in the in the audience. <laughs> okay, well that's that explains. All right, I'm glad it's just me. I can't help that. I guess I could ask him to leave. <laughs> Would you sit me by? I'm out so I can cool down a little. Ah, no, this this is good because it'll help burn off the COVID in my body. <laughs> <laughs> too too soon? Yeah, 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 yeah probably, probably too soon. Okay. Um, the cholera, the cholera. <laughs> Yeah, we're watching Victoria, and now my children are scared to death of dying from cholera. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Scarrett, we lost Mrs. Scarrett last night. Uh -oh. Yeah. Back to my previous comment on the service side, the diac and the uh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Is that also? Does that definition always point that service always pointing to Christ and the gospel? Yeah, but, but okay. Uh, unpack that. How, how would it not? The service and in, in what he's referring to here, mm -hmm. would it not also be that service is in relation to how you work through the body of Christ to point towards Christ and the gospel? Yeah. See, um, w w we'll get to this when he, when he has this kind of bullet point list of, of w what it is to be the body of Christ and, and, and uh, live in relation to one another. And so, one of the things I want to be careful in answering that question about is, he's going to say right off the bat in verse 9, let love be genuine. And I think, well, I think, I know from my own life as a Christian that there are times where you do the loving thing for ulterior motives. And that includes the good motive of, let's say, evangelizing. In other words, we're, we're going to have a, 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 you know, a, a, a big uh, social event and you know, lots of free food for people to invite the community, but the hope is that they'll see how nice we are and they'll come back Sunday. And we're just called to love because the neighbor needs us to. You see, now... That is loving for the sake of Christ. We're, we're doing that. We, we, we can act in that way because we know who we are in Christ. And, and, and let Christ take that and, 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 and do what He wants with it. But hey, there are people in the community that could use a, 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 a fellowship time, a, a, a community event, could, could, could use a free meal. Let's do it. And, and let the chips fall where they may. And, and not say, well, that was a bust. 
right? No, no one came. Uh, came no one came back the, the the following Sunday or the next Sunday, etc. So, no, let love be genuine. Just just do it be, out of love, right? D d that's how Christ loved us. Uh, so so that kind of thing. So it's happening because of the gospel, absolutely. But the gospel means we never do it. <laughs> We, we, we don't act this way as, as a kind of bait and switch. Yeah. Um, and see, we run into that all the time, don't we? I mean, especially as a church, and, and, you, and you plan these things, and you, you know, I'll, I'll, I, we're not the Lord saying, don't let your right hand know what your left hand's doing. Mm -hmm. right? that, that kind of, that, that's how we are to be about mm -hmm. our, our good works and so forth. And, and uh, I, I remember a pastor friend of mine was telling me how at, at, at a circuit meeting, uh, where, where the pastors from, from the, 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 the local area gather together once a month and uh, have, have church together and a Bible study and, and then usually, uh, usually eat together. And, and, and so the, the pastor said, well, let, well, let's pray before, uh, before we go out to the restaurant. And, and so another pastor says, no, 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 let's wait. Let's wait and pray in the restaurant so people will see us. Right? And, and so m m my buddy says... Okay, uh, <laughs> this seems to be in complete violation of, you, you know, d d do your works in secret. And, you know, it'd be one thing if we just kind of spontaneously in the restaurant decided to pray. But now we're, we're intentionally <laughs> praying for the sake of people noticing. You, you see? No, no, no. Right. Is, is there, though, so, again, back to the community event. So you hold a community event. For the love of the community, yeah. But then, but then, and not with the motive of maybe people show up. But if if no one came, then the next Sunday. What about though? Just the, that, I mean, and I don't even want to say human nature, but you would have the the disappointment. That yes. It didn't, and I mean, even even Christ, when when a miracles performed or something, expressed right. disappointment right. in the fact that. Only one of a certain number of people came back or told somebody or did right. the instructions that he gave them. The other three, four, five, or how many just just went off and yeah, did right. whatever. So, and so, yet he still did it. Right. See? But, it, yeah. but, but I'm just saying that we also have to be careful not to... Uh, be hypercritical of ourselves. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. If you right. say, now I'm an evil person because I feel disappointed. I feel dis that's because right. Because yeah. there's no positive outcome aside from just the, the right. loving exchange. Yeah, that's right. But, but to the extent that that disappointment is born of our planning the event. Oh, for that purpose. For, for, that, right. for that other purpose, yeah. Because we, we see Jesus all, over and over again doing what he does simply out of compassion, right? That, that, uh, that, that swung, right, that, that uh, visceral response to need is, is what moves him to feed the 5,000 or what moves him to perform a, a healing. Uh, it's not, and Jesus, thinking this a, a good prospect, right, <laughs> chose to heal this one and then was very disappointed when it didn't work out. Well, yeah. it's yeah. just like what you said before. We're programmed to look for a return on our investment, yeah, right. but we already have everything. Right. So that's irrelevant. Yeah, that's irrelevant. And, and and who's doing the work to begin with in terms of the actual converting? Right. The Holy Spirit's the Holy Spirit's the converter, right? And and, and if He wants to take an act of love that we do, and 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 use it for bringing someone into the faith to to ask more questions and visit church the next day, great. Great, but that shouldn't stand in the way of we we for 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 years have supported North Dallas Shared Ministries, uh, an agency that helps the, the the poor and especially those who were who were working but are suddenly down and out for various reasons, disability or or, or layoffs. And I don't think anyone has ever given to North Dallas Shared Ministries in this church with the idea that oh, watch, you know, when when people see that we're one of the sponsors of this agency, yeah. oh, that's going to mean uh, new members. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. And when these people are, you know, finally uh, up on their feet again and are, are gainfully employed, offerings. You know, no, 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 no. We're, we're Christians. We're, we're, we're called to love as we've been loved. We, 
to, we've been freely given to, and therefore we, we freely give out, right? As you've been, as you have freely received, so so freely give. Okay. Um, so so we got, we got the, the serving and the prophecy. Now, now let's look at these other ones. Um, the one who teaches in his teaching. Prophecy or serving? Yeah, this probably belongs to the ministry of the Word. How about the one who would, let's see. The one who exhorts in his exhortation. And this is verse 8. Yeah, so, so the, the exhorting word, incidentally, is the very word that Paul has used at the very beginning of this chapter, uh, I appeal to you. Parakalo. See, I appeal to you therefore, brothers. Remember, it, it's this um, uh, word that, that is related to the noun paraclete. Who's the paraclete? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Uh, what are ways we translate that word? The Holy Spirit is the counselor, counselor advocate. What else? Helper, comforter, all those are, are ways. Paraclete has this broad meaning that no one English word can quite capture. But, but for him to say, if doing that, then according to that, he's probably also still in the ministry of the word. Because that's what he, the Apostle Paul, is doing. It's more of a technical word for what the Apostle Paul does. He exhorts by the mercies of God. He exhorts by the gospel. Now that isn't to say no one else can do that. But it's, it's part of the job description, let's say, of the prophet, of the pastor. And, and, and that's another aspect of, of these gifts. That when you're given them, you, you, you don't get to pick and choose what part of the gift you do. You see? So... Guy's called to be a pastor and says, I'm not really into visiting people. <laughs> uh, that's the gift you've been given. <laughs> See, it's not a, for us, God's the giver of the gift. It's not self defined. Uh, the job description comes with the gift. So, my call, you know, it's quite clear what I'm called to do as your pastor. And, um, and, and so, so the, the, the pastor is to do this, to do this exhorting. The rest of the lady will also be given opportunities to exhort, to encourage in the gospel. Um, but it's, it's not as though uh, it is their, 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 their call, like, like evangelists. There, there are evangelists whose job it is to spread the gospel. You see? Now, we're all called to be instant, in season, and out of season, and be prepared to give a reason for the hope that's in us. Absolutely. But it's not our full-time job. Right? We're not all evangelists in that sense. Um, we're, we're all called to obey, and, and I guess we all have the authority to uh, engage in a citizen's arrest, but we are not all policemen. Fair enough? And, and, and we all see how that would be a problem... If, if, if we thought ourselves such, right? Or, or if it was only that way. If it was only that, well, now everybody's a policeman. And there are no, there are no actually called policemen. See, how, how quickly things would descend. Uh, As the word is witness come between the prophecy and the service or teaching. Well, a prophecy is in, that, in the way you're using witness there, just that. W witness is the is the confessing of the name, is confessing of the faith, which we're all called to do, which we're all called to do. That's right. But in a sense, witness also has that, that meaning of actually seeing and hearing the, 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 the very Lord Jesus and his death and resurrection. And in, in that sense, the only witnesses are already dead. Because I've heard that term. Yeah, so, so we're, our faith, our, our subjective faith is grounded on the witness of those who were there. Yeah, who, 
Yeah, but, but specifically those contemporaries of, of, of Jesus during his earthly ministry. See, I mean, that's what we're covering in John, how important it is to, John, to, to John's hearers for, for them to know that I, John, and the other witnesses in my gospel experienced these things. They, they, they saw these things happen. They heard him say this. See, it, it's a big deal in, in 1 John. Right? What we have seen and heard, we have declared to you, that you may you know, share in our joy, that kind of thing. See, it's important that, hey, we're not just, this isn't just a principle, this gospel. It's, it's, it's a matter of God entering our history. And so this is historically verifiable, what happened to this, this Jesus and what he did for us. Okay. Uh, what, what, what's the next one? Contributing. Contributing. What about that one? What, 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 what's, what's contributing? Yeah, next Sunday. <laughs> we ought to call it Contributing Sunday. Yeah. So that's that service. To contribute uh, of, of, your, of your resources to the pastor's salary. Uh, you, know, to don't, you know, it's hard not to, to, to talk about that without sounding self-serving. But, but, but scriptures do call us to do that. And, and, and the pastors uh, also are to contribute as members of the church, as members of the body. Absolutely. Uh, so the one who contributes in generosity, so, so there's a, God loves a cheerful giver. How about the one who leads? Leading. Leading. It's probably both, depending on the topic. Yeah, but I, I think Paul it, it really means it's part of service. The, the pastor is a servant. But you, you, there's, there's a need for lay leadership. Um, the early church had many more grades of service than, than we do in the church today. And so there was... Uh, you know, everything from the, the sexton, uh, who, who pretty much oversaw the, 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 the physical plant, to the, the lectors, and, and, you know, of course, over time, you're going to get all those differences in, in priest, you know, priest and bishop and uh, cardinal and so forth. That, that, that comes later. But uh, the, the point is that there's, um, you know, as you move up those, those ranks, you, you, you move more or less from here to here. Right, um, but 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 leading there, there there's there's certainly need for uh, leading. How about um, doing acts of mercy? That's everybody. But uh, yeah, acts of mercy, and and to do it with what? Cheerfulness. 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 I know it's hard, <laughs> uh, especially acts of mercy toward your children. <laughs> Be a recurring yeah, thing. yeah, it's a recurring thing. Yeah. It's a really bad night. No. No. You're not gonna die of cholera. Now go to bed. And and you think I'm making that up? <laughs> I wish I were. Those words were actually said. <laughs> I hate to. Well, we'll, 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 we'll if we don't finish, we'll, we'll we'll pick it up next week. We always do. Uh, now, now we get this um, uh, what wonderful uh, list of uh, exhortations we might say, um, starting with, uh, "Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor." Do not be slothful in zeal, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. 
Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what's honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. All right, there's, there's a lot there, and uh, if we hope to get through most of it, we're not going to do any one of them justice. Um, let's see, let me get my notes here. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Let love be genuine. The, the word here is a word that in Greek goes back to the word for hypocrite. So let love be non-hypocritical. Okay, uh, don't just pretend really love. I mean, that's what he's... Uh, who, who considers that easy? Yeah. I mean, we, we, we can spend our whole Christian lives living in just this section of Romans, can't we? And, 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 and still realize how, how short we fall. But let love be genuine. Uh, don't pretend. A actually love. Um, abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Well, that's a good word for us to hear in this day and age. Any evil around us? Um, this, this reminds me, it, it's in Hebrews, isn't it? Um, Hebrews 11, where, where mention is made of, uh, of righteous Lot. You know, think of Lot stuck there in Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, what, what does it say? Um, Abel, Enoch, Abraham. Oh, righteous Lot, who endured in the days. Oh, why, why is it not there? <laughs> <coughs> what was the author of Hebrews thinking, ordering it like this? Uh, Noah, Abraham. You'd think it'd be somewhere in there. Da -da -da -da. Well, no, actually, it's Peter. Peter does that. Peter's the one that, that, that brings up righteous Lot, isn't it? Is it in 2 Peter? You've all got your phones. Yeah. <laughs> 2 Peter 2.7. Aha, 2 Peter 2.7. Righteous Lot, greatly distressed by the sensual conduct of the wicked. For as that righteous man lived among them day after day, he was tormenting his righteous soul over their lawless deeds that he saw and heard. And so this abhorring what is evil is not a, a calling to uh, be judgmental and mean to all those unrighteous people around us, but it, it is to continue to recognize evil as evil. And so not to fall in with the world and suddenly <coughs> change the definition of blasphemy or pornography or uh, persecution or oppression or injustice to, to continue to abhor those things and when you see them change the channel we can do that it, it's tough hearing people complain on talk radio or, or in everyday conversation about uh, you know just how bad the, the, the media and, and um, you know, the movies and the TV shows, well, you don't have to watch them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's, it's amazing to my mind. I mean, I, I won't live long enough to do it. There's such great literature out there that I'm never going to get to read before I die, which is okay. I'll get to read it in heaven, right? Um, but there's plenty of quality, wonderful, edifying materials that, that people have written and produced in all the centuries that... that before us. Pick those things up. Most of them are free or in the public domain. 
right? The stuff you have to pay for is the bad stuff. You know, why, why, why are you paying for the streaming service that where 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 every uh, you know every main character now is perverted in some way? Uh, turn it off. A lot of times it's not even the show, it's the commercials. Yeah, but it's the commercials. Yeah, that's right. You can't even, you can't even you know, leave the TV yeah. on during the commercials if you're, if you're watching a sporting event with your kids now. Yeah. Like during the Olympics. So you got oh, you know, sure. two guys selling a house. You know, you know what that's a, what they're doing there. Yes, they're normalizing. Every couple is an yeah. interracial couple. Have you noticed that? It's, yeah. all, yeah. it's like you can't even watch the commercials. You, well, that's all right. I mean, you can't watch the Olympics. You can't watch, you know, the, the baseball playoffs. It's, it's everywhere. But, but you're an interracial couple, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, but we don't talk about it. I mean, <laughs> oh, <all right>. <laughs> <laughs> Dutch girl, and it's okay, it's, it's <laughs> right? Uh, so, people warn me, but I, uh, like people warned her, sure you want to go through this? Um, so, um, but, but abhor what's evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another, with, with brotherly affection. See, so, so a lot of this, the, the, the context uh, seems clearly the, the relationship we have, especially with one another in Christ. So he, he's going to get later on to how we are towards the rest of society. But especially here, he has in mind over and over again how we are to be towards one another, love one another with brotherly affection. Because guess what? You are brothers. You are brothers and sisters in Christ. Outdo one another, isn't this fun, in showing honor. See, what's our world about? Our world is about outdoing one another in getting honor, gaining honor. And, and we're called to, to, to be just the opposite way, to outdo one another in showing honor. It's, it's, it's a race to the bottom. How low can you go? Oh, he thinks he's humble, does he? <laughs> yeah. it, it, is, it is a funny way, because outdo one another, he's using competition words, but what's the competition? It's to be lowest, it's to be humblest, uh, lowliest. But, 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 but so it, it should be, as, as Christ was uh, to, to us. I, I'm trying to remember of the great early church history example of where the you know, the, the, the emperor, uh, you know, he receives communion next to the peasant. You see? I mean, it, it's, it's uh, I mean, it, it, in First Corinthians especially, right? Th this is the issue. Is they're, they're taking the worldly ways of judging <clears throat> one another and, and bringing that into the church. And Paul says, uh-uh, uh-uh. You know, so the, the rich are getting to eat first because that's how it would be elsewhere in the world. And if the poor get anything, they're lucky. Because the poor have to come late because they're too busy cleaning the house that the rich people got to leave early from. That kind of thing. And yet, we still fight that. We still fight those class prejudices. We all know that if this afternoon or, or second service, the mayor of Dallas and a homeless man walked through the doors, which one we'd give a warmer welcome to? You see? Uh, but outdo one another in... Okay, the Fricks say, no, we don't like the man. <laughs> the homeless man, of course. He didn't, the homeless man didn't raise my taxes. The, the homeless man didn't set up cross-dressing month at the library. Well, they, they have, you know, the, you know, every month is something, uh, you know, Pride Month, and, and that becomes the theme in the library. So you, you can't even, you know, can't watch the commercials, can't take the children to the library. Uh, head for the hills. <laughs> uh, okay, I was, was going to... The hills aren't safe either. <laughs> you know, the, the, the ATF will set them ablaze. Okay. I'll have to edit that out of the YouTube. <laughs> Taylor Lorenz is going to come to my house. All right. Um, don't be.
be slothful in zeal, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord. And then how about what we, we end on, on this one? Uh, this rejoice and hope. These three go together. Hope is oriented towards which time? Past, present, or future? Rejoice in hope. Future. Future. You hope for that which is not yet the present reality. And so, patient in tribulation, constant in prayer, this goes together with hoping, because we know what God is going to give us at the end. And that can give us the strength to bear with the suffering that must happen between now and then. So these gifts, these gifts are sometimes hurt, the carrying out of them. The, 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 the cross of being a, a father or mother, or, or even a son or a daughter to a, a, a parent dying, a parent sick, a parent sick for a long time. What, what a cross that is. But to know that, at the end, life where there is eternal joy. That crown of life that Jesus has prepared for us. You know, think about Jesus on the cross. That this suffering remains suffering. And, and, and Jesus isn't on the cross thinking, oh, isn't this great to be suffering like I am? But what sustained him through that suffering, the knowledge that it would lead to our salvation. And so likewise, our, the, the suffering will, will still hurt. It'll still be painful to go through what we may have to go through depending on the gift God has given us. But to be constant in prayer, to pray for Focus on heavenly things, not earthly, enables us to be patient in tribulation and therefore to rejoice in hope. This is only temporary, this pain, this suffering, this affliction. Uh, God will deliver me from it. Um, so I, there, there's a, I, I love this about the, the, the abbreviated communion service that we pastors use when we visit someone who's homebound or in the hospital. And, and the prayer after communion is so well put. It, it says, uh, may this heavenly food which we have received strengthen our faith so that we may bear all crosses, sickness, and trials with patience and trust until you grant us deliverance, peace, and health. See, and that's, that's how we move through life. That God sustains us with his gifts so that we can carry out the service he calls us to. Gifts we should understand them as. And to do so with patience and trust. Knowing that one way or another he is going to bring us deliverance, peace, and health. And those things eternally. Eventually. Uh, thanks be to God. Okay, so we'll, we'll pick up uh, there. Uh, we've got the, the contributing word, which will be most appropriate to talk about next Sunday when we ask people to pledge. <laughs> so it's all worked out. It's all part of the plan. Um, but then we'll, we'll also likely move into the, the controversial stuff. Uh, like, like this isn't controversial. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we get uh, the, the powers that be stuff. Uh, be subject to the governing authorities, which apparently some of you need to hear. <laughs> Not welcoming the mayor. <laughs> uh, let's close in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your gifts to us, especially the gift of your Son, Jesus, in whom we have uh, forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation, and through whom also we have uh, the gifts of being in the body of Christ and uh, serving one another in various and many ways. And we pray, Lord, that you would continue to sustain us in the faith so that we may uh, love one another in uh, genuine ways and in that way be of great service to all those that you have put in our lives. And in Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.